Hey, hey! What's going on, everybody? We'll wait for some folks to hop in. How is everyone? Let's uh, get some people chiming in where you're watching from. Today is going to be the most structured live that you've seen me do <laughs> since taking over this position and being in this, uh, this position in general. So I'm very excited uh, to show you the day is finally here uh, to announce Leonardo Design Studio Pro. Uh, for all of our ecosystem here at Caesar with the Romeo and the Juliet high definition cutters, along with Leonardo Design Studio Basic, we're going to dive into the pro software and we're going to go over some details today. So while you guys are chiming in and saying hello, I want to introduce the room. We have a massive crew hanging out with us today. So just to clarify, we are on Facebook and YouTube and we are on IG, correct Trev? Yes, we are. Sweet, sweet. All right. So hanging out with us behind the camera as always and making sure that well, I look good and the, everything that we're showing you looks really good is Trev. Say hi, Trev. <laughs> hey, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> Hanging out in the back once again. We actually got him twice in one week to hang out in a live, and he had to fly all the way from, uh, well, should I, maybe I won't disclose where he's from, but he had to fly all the way from across the nation to be here with us. Tony's hanging out in the back. Say hi, Tony. Hi, Anna. <laughs> and the hanging out out there is actually the other half of Tony's team who's done an incredible job uh, with the software and got us to this point where we are at along with the other portion of our team is Kayla hanging out. So make sure you guys chime in the comments and say hi to Kayla out in the main area. We got some folks outside of the room. We have some people inside of the room, but represent our sales team hanging out with us again this week. Uh, like I said, two pats don't make a right, but two pats will deliver some great educational content and some entertainment, I hope. Say what's up, Pat. What's up, everyone? <laughs> and then we have hanging out in the comments. You guys have seen him. You guys know him. You guys love him. He's got the wittiest uh, copy in the industry is Adam Sneath. Say hi, Adam. Hey, hey, everyone. All right, and I'm just going to say it. Uh, because we all know how her response is going to be already, but the maestro for the evening, as always, is Anna. Say hi, Anna. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so say hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. <laughs> there we go. That's awesome. See, we're throwing everybody up. But we also got some other folks hanging out. We got Chad hanging out, representing our sales. He's going to be in the comments outside of the room. We have Maya hanging out with us outside of the room. I believe Yawn is sitting out there as well. And we have our entire team globally that are in the comments during this live that will answer all of your pertinent questions. Uh, because what I really want to do is just go through the software, show you all the new tools, show you all the new features, talk to you about the subscription, talk to you about cost, when it's going to be available, all of that good stuff. And then we're off to the races. So really quick, Trev, let's hop in or anybody that's monitoring comments. Let's just shout out a couple people as they're coming in. Yeah, of course. Uh... We got the crafty brick that hey, says, hey. well, specifically they're calling out uh, Sarah Clark and Ellie May, who are also here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Pam upstairs says hey. happy Friday. <laughs> um, Kristen Senchi is here. Nice, hi Kristen. Um, uh, Deborah Leduc from Brighton, Ontario is here. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let me, yeah, let's let me, hop over to Instagram. And yeah, hey, yeah. just just so you guys know ahead of time too, if we get your names, last names incorrect, first names incorrect, handles incorrect, we apologize. We're doing our best here, and so we'll uh, we'll hop over to Instagram. Who do we have watching in? Uh, we have handmade underscore by Cruz says hello. Hey, hey, what's going on? Uh, Stephanie's here. Hi. Um, guy named uh, eighteen. Kawai says, nice decorated shirt. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, the Leonardo Design Studio Pro is the Leonardo Pro shirt that I, uh, that I made. And actually, you know what? As part of our demonstration, since we got to show you all these cool tools anyways, I'll just show you how to make this shirt. That, that would be a really easy one, I think, for us to go over as we're showing you all the tools in Leonardo Design Studio Pro. So hanging out on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, make sure, guys, like I say all the time, if for whatever reason a connection or something freezes on one, hop over to the other platform so you don't miss anything. And this will live on Facebook and YouTube permanently, and I believe we're going to try to cut it up for Instagram uh, so that this will be there forever. So we're hoping this is kind of your intro to the complete guide to Leonardo Design Studio Pro. So let's hop right in. Let's go over some of the tools 
and then we're going to get into some of the logistics and the administrative stuff and then i think at that time tony once we get done with this let's just turn this on so people can start playing yeah sweet okay so what we're going to do is we'll revert our attention over to the big screen and for you guys just because we got you a little bit bigger screen to view this time because we didn't want you on that little guy for leonardo design studio pro so Let's hop in. What I'm going to do is hit the magic button to switch this over to Pro. And as you saw right off the bat, our toolbar expanded into a couple new tools, features, uh, and a lot more option and freedom to design inside of Leonardo. So let's go start to finish. I'm just gonna go right down the toolbar in order of all the new things and the cool stuff that we've been able to add in software. And then we'll go to some questions. Uh, and then after that, uh, well, again, we want to see what you come up with and how you uh, how you can design. So from the start, I'm just going to bring a shape on the screen because I think this first one warrants us to have a real good visual of what's going on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit my magnifying uh, button, and I'm just going to highlight this square so that we can make it a little bigger on screen for you. But going right down the line, the first thing that I notice as a new tool is there's a bunch of eraser options. And I think what we do is we just go through each one, we'll demo exactly what they do, how they're going to function, and some of the really cool jam-packed features that are inside of each of these tools. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'll go to the simple eraser brush. Now, as you see on screen, we have not only our eraser tool here, but we also have a way to make some finite adjustments as we go, and a couple of those are, uh, standard is going to be a circle, uh, for the eraser brush, let me see if I can bring it on screen so you can see it, will be a circle for the eraser brush and also usually the line option uh, will be off before you actually have the ability to turn it on. So right when you get in, I can now just go along my image with the eraser brush and just like that, I can erase stuff now inside of Leonardo Design Studio. So if we have any images where we have those, you know, what I like to call the low hanging pieces of the design that we just wanna be able to eliminate, we now have the ability in a free form. Now the cool part is, I'm gonna go back to my original image, is we also have the ability right here to change how big that pointer of that pen brush is. So now I can really design inside of this uh, square that we had built, a rectangle we had built, and now really be able to hone in the fine detail and the things that I'm looking to eliminate. And the best part for everybody is you also have a square version of it, uh, as you can see, and then I'll show you a circular version, uh, and then the square version. So you have two different uh, tips or points that you can utilize, and one of the really cool things that actually the software team has added in, and I didn't even realize this, uh, until we first got the build for the uh, the pro version is there's actually a line option so I can go ahead and click this line and now I can go draw from one point to the next and now as you see that's a perfectly straight line I don't have to worry about drawing and am I gonna make a mistake and get a piece out of or uh, eliminate a piece out of my design that I don't want I have my straight line as soon as I'm done I snap that uh, away I let go of the the clicker and now I've been able to erase uh, an element out of this of this uh, rectangle we have. So let's go over the next step in this uh, eraser toolkit and that's actually going to be our knife tool. Now a lot of folks had suggested that they wanted a knife function. That there's something that being able to make like I'm about to do a quick slice through a design and then separate that design was something that you guys had asked for uh, from the very beginning from us here at Caesar uh, Global and so we're very excited to have something that just is going to give you a quick way to separate your images on the fly. Next tool on the eraser menu is going to be the whole eraser. This one's actually pretty awesome. So I'm going to show you a sneak peek of a tool that's a little bit further down the list, but I need it just in the event that we're going to be utilizing this, uh, this whole eraser. So I'm going to bring a circle on my screen and I'm going to just change the color of this so I can see it. And I'm going to highlight both of these images. So I have a circle as my top layer, and then I have my rectangle as my bottom, or my bottom layer, my back layer. And I'm actually going to head over to all of our kind of arrange options, and I'm going to hit punch out. So now, as you can see, I just punched out. So don't tell anybody that I, I told you too soon into this live. We're going to get into that function here in a minute. But for the sake of the whole eraser, I can now. Uh, click on this and again same thing applies it's it will give you a standard circle that you can utilize and the line button is usually turned off however 
I'm just gonna hit the square, I'm gonna turn the line on, and I'm gonna bring uh, the amount, or the size of my uh, eraser tool up a little bit. So now we can really see what this does. So now what I can do is I can go in, and exactly what it says, I can fill in a hole. So if we have those little holes, gaps, and things like that in our design, we now have the ability uh, to fill in all of that space. So this would be kind of cool now that I did that. Let me bring up one circle, show you guys a quick way to make a stop sign in software. So I have one circle here on the, on the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that and make sure to change the color. I'm going to highlight both of these just so you can see that they're gonna be two overlapping um, images or two overlapping shapes. I wanna go ahead and select my purple layer, which is going to be the layer that will knock out of the back layer, okay? And if you notice, every time now that you drag, which Tony and your team, thank you so much for this. Everybody asked about hotkeys, tips, tricks, how to use these tools. Now when you drag or your cursor around the screen, you're gonna notice in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of your software that it actually is going to give you a hotkeys and also quick tips on how to manipulate your artwork while you're in Leonardo Design Studio Pro. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, are the hints uh, in 1.18 in the basic as well, right? Yeah, basic so and Pro. Currently in basic and in Pro, something that we're showing you have in both softwares. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna utilize this right here that says resize from center. And what it's telling me I need to do is hold down shift, and then I can actually resize this circle from the center point of both of these images. So now let's go ahead and create kind of a, a simple offset between two layers. I'm going to highlight these two, and then I'm gonna hit that same punch out. So now we have a circle that is hollow in the middle. We just basically have that, that um, uh, contour line that we're working with. I'm gonna come back to my hole eraser, and I'm just gonna draw a line. Let's go to the circle, make sure that we don't fall out of the boundaries. And I'm gonna simply draw a line from this edge to this edge. And then now I'm gonna change all of that to red. And now I know how to keep my neighbors out of my house. I got a quick little stop sign for you just to show you how these tools function. But in the event that I wanna cover up the whole circle, I can go in and I can just uh, create lines or I can make uh, the actual point a little larger and really uh, have an opportunity to fill this in freehand. So now I'm just gonna cover up everything. Look at this. I'm like coloring with a mouse. I feel so special right now. So there we go. Now we have one image that's all filled in. So we showed you how to create a cavity or create a punch out or a knockout and now we're showing you how to fill it back in in the event you make a quick little mistake which we all know it happens from time to time. So the next tool here in the lineup is the slice brush and I really like the slice brush especially when it comes to um, creating designs that maybe you want to keep that center point uh, because we want to be able to do something with it later. Uh, but with that said, I just ran the slice tool over this circle. And now we have the top and the bottom of this circle remaining. So, oh, actually, you know what? Let's do this. We're just going to straighten the line out a little bit. Use our square and then all right, we'll use our circle and then we'll use our straight line. Check this out. We just made another and we just made another stop sign. So listen, if you're in the Roadworks division or you work with the local municipality, we're showing you how to take a large scale PSV and create stop signs that are for anywhere and everything. So this is a really cool, easy function within Leonardo Design Studio Pro. So I think the next step is we show them uh, the vector brush. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, all righty. So in basic, in Leonardo Design Studio Basic, you guys know already that you have the pen tool and you have the sketch tool. One thing that'll be added to that family when you uh, actually download the pro software, or I shouldn't say download, and we'll explain that in a minute, but when you get the pro software, you will find that there's actually a vector brush. And I think this is super cool because sometimes we need the ability to make custom shapes or let's say that you're a designer, you guys already know within Leonardo Design Studio, if you have a Mac 
and you have an iPad, you can sidecar your software and physically draw in software. The same thing if you have a Wacom tablet or you have a drawing tablet as a graphic designer, which Anna has one sitting at her desk. She's been able to use these functions as well, but now I have a vector brush, so I can create custom line work. I can change the actual size of how big my lines are, uh, and I have a circle and a square option uh, where I, within Leonardo Design Studio Pro. So an example of this would be uh, for all you folks out there that like to make really cool, um, I don't even know what they're called, the monogram, like single letter and then the last name runs through the middle. Mm -hmm. Whatever those are called, because I love making them too, let's make one really quick on the fly. And usually we're using a bolder font for the actual um, last name. So let's pick, let's go this guy, this is okay. Pick a T. And what we're gonna do in there is we're gonna actually change this to black just because I wanna have it that way. Uh, and then I'm gonna take actually my eraser brush. And again, we're gonna keep uh, the square up. We're gonna keep it on a single line because I wanna make sure that when I score this through the T that we're on a straight path. But let's go ahead and change the point a little bit bigger. Uh, let's go up to, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is actually score this directly through this T. Okay, and Trev, I'm making this for you. So if you wanna make a shirt, I'll save it for you, bud. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> and then I'm gonna come back to that vector brush, okay? Now, the cool part about the vector brush is like I said, we can create custom vector lines right within software. So now I can draw this from the T over to this side, over that away. And with just a quick little bit of organization, I now have a really, really fast, convenient way uh, to create the first part of this, you know, monogram last name thing. So let's add the rest in for Trev because he may use it. Uh, let's go there. And then we're going to bring this into place. And I'm going to go ahead and pop it, plop his name right in there. And we just showed you in a quick, I don't know, Trev, how long was that? 30 seconds? Something like that. That it took yeah. us to create that. So within Leonardo Design Studio Pro, we can all agree in the room that it's going to increase our production time, right? It's going to make creating new things a lot faster for us, which is one of the big parts that we're super excited. But let's say... Patrick, I want, uh, you know, the shapes that we get in basic are great, but I don't want to be able to create a custom shape. Let's say like a custom polygon, or maybe we have too many straight edges because not everybody's a 90 degree angle kind of person. Sometimes we like to live, live life on a curve and on the edge. So we also have a really cool feature inside Leonardo Design Studio where we can now create a custom polygon. We can create a rounded rectangle and we can create a custom star. So. Let's kind of see what that means and dive into it. I'm gonna click on custom polygon. Now, as of right now, it's set up as a triangle. We have three sides to this, but what if we wanna do, let's say six sides or nine sides to our polygon. We now have the ability to do that right away, create that custom shape and bring it directly into software by a simple uh, hold down of the left button on your mouse and drag over to scale your design. And remember the benefit to you is, is that all of these are scalable after the fact. So it's not like you get one shape that just stays that same size and that's all you get. You can customize these uh, as you see fit. So let's delete that one uh, and let's go over to the rounded rectangle. For me, like I said, I'm not a 90 degree angle person when I design things. So I can actually in the custom uh, rounded rectangle shape, I can create how much of that, what is that called, a bevel, right? Is that a bevel rounded edge, bevel? Mm -hmm. I can create a custom bevel, <clears throat> and then I can also create a custom uh, width and height. But for most of us, if you're like me, I like to just get the layout of my, my shape or my design, and then I bring it into software and I can manipulate the size how I see fit. So with that, I can hit apply, and now I can create those custom rounded uh, rectangles or rounded corners uh, when we're creating things like, say, a wedding invitation. Maybe you're creating something like that and you don't want the generic 90 degree angle card or maybe you're creating an element or maybe a new design within Leonardo Design Studio that you want something a little bit more rounded. And the benefit is too, if I double click on these, guys, I can still change and manipulate the, uh, the actual shape after the fact, as you can see here in some of the corners. I can still delete nodes. I can still add nodes if I so choose. 
uh, right here after. So you're not stuck and structured to what the output of that tool does. You're kind of stuck and structured to whatever your creativity is, which is a really cool part of Leonardo Design Studio Pro. Now, let's go to the next shape because this is a big one and I'm excited to get into the tools that are on the tail end of the toolbar. Uh, let's create a custom star for folks. So give me a number of sides, PB, that you want this star to be. Eight? Got it. So eight. And again, I can do the same thing where I can change the inner radius, which is just how deep or how long those points are going to be, uh, as well as change um, the actual radius of the, the, the uh, shape itself. Once I hit apply, I can bring it onto screen. And like I said, like a simple drag, I can go ahead and uh, create now that eight point star that Pat Boyle and his crew love for their golf outings. Apparently that's part of their logo. So we now have a really convenient way. Now, and remember guys, these are vectored images. So if I just copy and paste this and I go ahead and change the color to that top layer, and like we did before, hold down shift and drag from center, I can now create a custom punch out uh, to this shape as well. So it's just allowing us, let's add this to your design, Trev. I think this looks kind of cool. Let's go ahead and bring your design in. Look at that. We're creating an icon for Trev here right on it's the a, podcast. Very much. Or, I mean, not on the podcast, it's like my, su it's like my <laughs> Superman it's symbol. Yeah, there you right, go. Yeah. This is your Superman <laughs> symbol. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not all heroes wear capes. Right? <laughs> not all. Some wear eight-point stars. Look I'm going to tattoo icon. this to myself. Okay. That's pretty narcissistic. We might, well, we might know a guy that can do that. <laughs> All right, so anyways, let's move on to the next step. Now, you guys know uh, for Leonardo Design Studio Basic, we're already supporting glyphs, um, in my opinion, the best that there is right now uh, for this style of software. Uh, we already have some really cool functions, features, abilities, things like that. But one of the big parts of 1.18, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, but Ungroup Paths is in the Basic as well, correct? That's true. Beautiful. Okay, so with that said, now I can type in Trevor's name again. And let's say that uh, I want to move this around and manipulate his name a little bit for design purposes. This is now just a basic function that I'm going to show you on how to create this. But I can right click once the whole images or the whole word is highlighted, go down to paths, and then ungroup paths. And now I have the ability to kind of throw Trev's uh, letters a little off center. Let's go that way, that way, and then up, and then that way, and then up. Look at that. This is very Rent-esque, the way that your name is lined up on here, like the movie. You know it's what I mean? It's too bad I kind of hate Rent. Oh, <laughs> it's <on>. my least <laughs> <way. Come> on, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's all right. So, but if you did like Rent, this would be a really cool option. I think it was you. just that I, I watched it under very awkward circumstances. <laughs> okay, I'm not talking sense. about it on the live, but right, it, was right. it was an uncomfortable experience. So after the experience. fact, we'll do an expose on that. Yeah, all we'll right, do cool. an expose. So with that said, uh, we now have the ability, and this is within Leonardo Design Studio Basic even, which is really cool, uh, is that you have the ability to ungroup paths. So let's go ahead and move down the line of tools and functions that we have in Leonardo Design Studio. And I think it's important to show this only one way um, when it comes to this next tool inside the text tool section is I'm gonna actually go ahead and bring in a t-shirt uh, directly from, just pulled it off Google, uh, so apologize for whoever it is. Uh, but anyways, we can bring this in as a background image, okay? So now I can bring my shirt <clears throat> onto my design board I'm just gonna hit page mark so I can center it. And then we go ahead and hit my magnifying uh, glass for this one and zoom into just the garment. Problem that we find in a lot of softwares and one of the reasons why we incorporated the ability to bring an image in as a background image is a lot of software templates are very basic the way that they look or in some cases they look very like cartoonish and fine line work and it really isn't in, isn't really conducive to being able to design and see visual representations of what we're creating every day so one of the cool parts is is after i bring in this background image which again you can do in leonardo basic i can come down to my toolbar and there's a really fancy tool here that says text on arc so let's go ahead and click on that pop-up window pops up and here's the cool part as you guys see right now the text on arc icon or tool is centered to my actual workspace but patrick what if i want to make a last name that's an arc text uh within my shirt or on a shirt so i can show it send it to a customer or maybe show it to my family because we're getting ready to do family reunion shirts and i really want them to be able to see what we can create make something cool i can actually move 
this tool around from the center point. So I can change where the center point on this tool is um, to actually uh, see how it will fit and work on the shirt itself. Now, a really cool part about it as well is that we have, let's put in a word here. Let's go Caesar, Oop, wrong way to spell Caesar North America. Sorry, Yohan. <laughs> so with that now, I can put Caesar North America on an arc. And as you can see, there's two ways to manipulate this. I can either change everything manually from the radius. I can change the angle, which is how where my actual, um, my actual text lies on the circle itself. I can change the baseline position. I can change whether it's gonna be centered uh, above, wait a minute, plus below. Let's see this, Tony. Let's see, you, you see your work. So if I'm gonna go below, let's go ahead and hit enter to create a new line. And now I can put Caesar global. So not only can I create a text to arc on top, but now I can actually change whether I wanna do it on top and on bottom. And again, all of this together is you have the ability to manipulate it. So if you want to keep uh, in a locked position like I have here, and you just want to be able to move that text around in the circle, I can go ahead and grab the little green dot, uh, and I can actually move this around and it will stay fixed no matter how close I go to the center or how far away I go to the center. It'll actually stay fixed to that uh, center uh, crosshair, as I'm going to call it. And so in the case of this, we're going to go ahead and delete the bottom portion and I'm just gonna go ahead and manipulate a little bit here, and then we can actually change our font size, but the best part about this, guys, is that I can go to font style, and now I have an entire font library. So for me personally, it's showing me right here, which is an awesome thing to have, 384 downloaded fonts that I currently have on my PC. Now, I wanna be very clear about something. We don't sell fonts. We don't push those things through the software. Maybe down the road we can have custom fonts and stuff like that, but for now, like we said, creation should be free, and most of you guys are doing what we do and downloading from websites like Defont uh, and other sources such as Defont. So for me, I utilize them. Uh, so quick shout out, I use, utilize them for a lot of my fonts. So now I have all 384 fonts that I actually have in locally stored in my computer. So that means if I go from Leonardo Design Studio to Microsoft Word, to PowerPoint, I'm gonna have all of these fonts and they're mine. I don't, have to, I don't have to give them back if I decide that I don't want Leonardo Pro anymore. So with that, we can go ahead and change whatever font we want. We can also within this change how uh, big our text is. And then all I'm gonna do is center that up, make sure the radius is centered. And I know we're using the front side of a shirt, but once I hit apply, the best part is, now I can send my customer, if you have a business, I can send my customer a mock-up of what their actual shirt is going to look like or potentially look like with colors and everything like that. But I also have the ability, like I said, if we're just an everyday home crafter and we like to play around with the software, but we really like to be able to see, again, that visual representation of what we're creating, you now have the ability to do that without having templates that you can't confide in or trust or, or, or be able to utilize and manipulate. So let's go ahead and eliminate all of this stuff and go in to the next tool, um, which is, let me bring up an image really quick on screen. Let's go ahead and find one in my designs. Uh, let's go to FCGs. Let's see. I don't know what those are. So we're gonna go to the design studio for the next one. I think that makes more sense. So let me go in here. Um, ooh, this is actually a good one. A lot of people said that they love these wavy text designs that we have in software in the uh, design studio. So you guys can maybe call out a couple of your favorite text styles, but let's actually hop into Leonardo Design Studio because, and only because I think there's a way to do this inside Leonardo Design Studio. So let's go in and uh, give me a word or a phrase, Anna, something that's easy to spell. Create. Create. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> See, I couldn't even spell it almost already. It's, easy to spell. it's not that easy to spell for me. Anyway, let's go in, pick a font, something simple that's easy to read for the sake of our conversation here today. And I'm going to actually blow up my canvas just a little bit so you guys can get a better view. Check this out. We have now an entire library of different warping options. And I'm going to save the last warp option. I'm going to save that for last because it's so cool what the software team globally has been able to do with this. But let's just go over the basic ones. We have a flag warp. 
And this is pretty awesome because I can actually grab these points and I can manipulate this flag warp and make it e look even more warped uh, than when we started. So now I can take my design, there's my create and the flag warp. I can make a, another copy. And then once I bring that down, we basically can create that same exact American made or American vibes, whatever it was, design right within software. So Patrick, what if we don't want a flag warp? What if I like using something, let's say, uh, hold on one second there. What if I like using a globe warp? This is pretty cool. I actually like this. I'm going to show you another tool or another way to utilize this globe warp and actually something that we've done upstairs that you guys may see at trade shows and not even realize that you see this design and how quick we, we can make it. So we have a globe warp. This is pretty awesome because you can now take your text and give it that global feel as we're a global company. See, listen, I'm working on you guys got to fire back with some laughs in here. I mean, I'm trying these little dad jokes as we go. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Pat crickets. Boyle. I appreciate it. <laughs> so anyways, we have the globe warp. Let's just go through the other tools. <laughs> Nobody's liking my jokes today. So another warp option that we have is the tube warp. And this is not to be confused with the next warping option. And I'm going to actually bring it up on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, let me just make a copy of this really quick. Bring this one down. Go back to that tube warp. So for any of my uh, sports people, all the sports moms and dads out there, if you're anything like me, I love doing art text on jerseys and design or logos, or I'm sorry, jerseys and other forms of, you know, like bags, hats, stuff like that. So with that said, having this quick tube warp is a really cool option in uh, Leonardo Design Studio Pro because now I can create those quick art text on the fly. And again, guys, Everything is manipulatable. Now, if you're another, if you work with other softwares, a lot of times the way that these types of tools work, especially when we're doing arcing, is you really are structured to the parameters that that tool will allow you to actually function. Meaning that I may be able to uh, change how far the letters are spread apart or how big the overall circle shape that I'm trying to fit, but we have a fit the paths that we're gonna show you here in a minute that, that, uh, that'll take care of that. This is really to get those quick on the fly arc text. So you can throw the names, you can throw numbers, you can throw designs uh, up on your garments quickly. And again, you still have the freedom to create anything. So this one isn't even really so much a tube warp. This is more of a, um, it's more of like a, what is this called? Like a front, I feel like this is more of like a front, like a donut shop awning sign is the shape of that if you just drop down the bottom line. But anyways, we won't get into that. I didn't want to mistake that. There's a reason I was going over the tube warp is because we also have the circle warp. And so they kind of operate the same, but different. And I'm gonna explain why. When I go ahead and click on the circle warp, I now have the ability to not only change how big that circle warp is going to be, how tall uh, my actual letters of my warping is gonna be, but much like the tube warp, the circle warp actually is working from a center point and it's trying to create basically that triangle around the outside of your design, whereas the tube warp is going to give you a little bit of more freedom of manipulation on the edges and things like that. But nevertheless, I can take my design, I can make it as wide as I want, I can bring it as far around that circle as I possibly can. And this is also a great option and tool uh, for you when you're doing artwork manipulation for things, again, like jerseys and just home crafts. You know, if you have a lot of things that are maybe rounded, this is a great, great option for you. So let me go back in time. Boop, 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 boop. All right. With that said, we also have, this is such a cool tool and Anna, Anna and I kind of like gush over this one, but let me actually bring in a design to really get the full dramatic effect of this. And I know we have, speaking of create, I know we have that create drip design that, uh, that we were playing with the other day, Anna. So this one right here, it shows so well when you already have an existing. Remember, when we develop or when we make artwork that we want to kind of look three dimensional or we want it to be uh, really pronounced from the background, we utilize those drop shadows in you know, Adobe and Corel and all of that stuff to really manipulate our artwork. Leonardo Design Studio, once we have those designs in the software, we now have a way to make this look even cooler. So I'm gonna hit this 3D warp, boom, nothing happens. That's it, nothing happens, guys. No, I'm kidding. If I take an edge, a top or a bottom corner, watch what happens now. Look at that. I mean, 
it's literally three dimensional. If this TV wasn't a 4K high definition standard TLC TV, this thing would be popping out of the screen right now. So now we have that, that option, which I think is really cool for the 3D warp effect. With that said, I'm very, very excited to show you this next tool. And again, I'm gonna bring a design in, um, something that's a little bit more elongated so you really get an understanding of how this tool works. And we're really gonna make sure that we blow this up so everybody can see it really, really well. So we have added in, and again, I can't stress how cool this tool is. I know there's a few people in the group that have had pro access uh, so they can help us to create some educational content and things like that. And even they're gushing over this stuff. This is an awesome tool, is our fit to cone. So what we actually can do is I can hit fit to cone. It's going to bring me up literally a 3D rendering of a cup. And it'll also show my design on said cup. And what I have the ability to do now is, do we have a cup in the room? You got kind of a Dunkin' Dino's cup. We'll just use that one, Trev. Give me one of them. I don't care. Just Wait, grab me one. Okay. Carefully. There we go. Oh, yeah. It's full? Okay. Let's just in. not spill it all over. Yeah. So let's not spill it all over. So the cool part about that is, is now I have a three. Oh, let me not show Anna's info. There we go. Dunkin', dang it. There's no way. There's a Dunkin' brand so well. So anyway, I have my cup here inside this 3D uh, template. I actually can measure the top diameter, the bottom diameter, and the length of this cup to get a perfect registered uh, wrap text or design around say this cup if I want. So we don't have to go just straight, you know, like this one right now, it's a little just straight down the edge. Maybe we want to wrap that around and, and warp it a little bit. So let's go ahead in software. Thank you, Trev. I can go in and again, top, manipulate, bottom, make it a little skinny mini. And then we can create a custom length in this cup. The best part is I can take my artwork and I can actually build my artwork a little bit build bigger. But you're saying to yourself, Patrick, if, but the backside of the cup, how do I know that that design's not too big and it's gonna overlap? Well, here's the benefit. We have an X and Y axis rotation. So now I can actually rotate this 3D model and see where that uh, design is actually going to lie in, or like on the cup itself. The 3D model has real-time shading. I'm actually really impressed by that. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I have to call that one out. Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's a good, yeah, that's cool. Kudos, kudos to the software yeah. team for this one. And the benefit is, is that once I am done and I'm happy with my design, I can go to a 2D version of this template. So now you can see that prominent curve on the top and the bottom as well as where it shrunk. So there's two options now, which is really cool for the end user. Not only can you use the circle warp, which will help you to create the same thing, but the, two, the 3D uh, warping, it just, that has now taken the guesswork out of how big does the top need to be to the bottom to make sure uh, that it's not going to uh, hinder my design. And for any of you ornament makers, especially something like this, is really gonna be beneficial because I know a lot of people are doing those little Starbucks cup ornaments and I think they're super cool. But once I hit apply, you can now see my artwork has been manipulated again uh, on my main page. So when I get ready to send this to uh, my cutter, whether Romeo or Juliet, I now can make sure and I can have confidence that that's gonna work perfectly for me uh, when I actually go to apply it to uh, whatever I'm going to apply it to. Now, with that, one other cool tool is if we have, say, an artboard, Okay, we've talked about this before. One thing that we've done at Caesar, whether you're a pro user and or you're a basic user, is you have the ability to create a custom canvas. And what I mean by custom canvas, I think a lot of people think just the design space uh, that we're working within, but I wanna show you one way that I use that custom canvas function for myself, uh, which I think is really cool. Let's say that I have a material. We'll take a PSV, right, a, a Starling, uh, Easy PSV Starling. As an example, I take a 12 inch wide piece by, you know what, let's go, what's, what's a yard? Is it 36 inches? Yes, sir. Perfect, one yard, okay? And I have this create design, I'm gonna rotate this, and I'm gonna drop it down into the origin point. This next tool is so cool when it comes to actually being able to accurately, essentially nest uh, our designs and create multiple designs, kind of like a step and repeat, is our tile array tool. So in Leonardo Design Studio Pro, when you click on Tile Array, which is for anybody that uh, doesn't have navigation experience with the toolbar, uh, typically this toolbar actually just shows the rotate option. So you're gonna go to that toolbar, open it up, hit Tile Array, 
Oh, I already gave away the farm. Look at that, guys. Whoopsie daisies. See, you guys can't trust me with stuff like this. Not only is it going to show me my design where I can now create multiple um, designs within one page, but there's a reason why I measured my material. So if I have a 12 inch by 36 inch piece of material, which is just one foot by a yard of material, I can hit this fancy button called auto fit and it's going to automatically scale how many uh, wide and how many long are going to fit on my uh, actual cutting mat or in this case on the material roll when we feed it through Romeo or Juliet. And I can also include the grid lines between copies. I like doing this for me personally. Uh, it just helps me to kind of keep things separated in my brain. Uh, but now you can see we have the ability to add multiple copies very quickly. So I'm going to do that one more time just so you can see it live. I click on my tile array. It obviously has my last uh, settings already up. So let's go in like you would for the first time ever. Click it, hit tile array. Boom, and then auto fit, apply, and now I'm done. So when we're talking about the, the home crafter and the person that's doing this just as a hobbyist with Leonardo Design Studio Pro, you guys know as well as I do that when it comes to Christmas time, when it comes to birthdays, when it comes to family reunions, we like to make of the bulk. And most of the time, just like Pat Boyle, he's got a nice fancy truck. So you know everybody in his neighborhood's calling him when it's time to move. Even Anna had to call him when it was time to move. So not calling anybody out. but. We also know that we like to help people, so we like to make multiple copies. But if I am a business owner, in less than five or six seconds, I am now able to input a custom width and height of my material that I'm gonna use, hit that tile array, auto fit, and I'm ready to cut. So we're cutting off some of that production time that, like we say every time, Pat B, production time, time is what? Money, money, Moolah. money. Moolah, it's scratch, it's money, it's the greenbacks, and we're trying to save some of that too. So with that said, the other tool that I thought was pretty cool is the rotated array. Now, what rotated array is, is it basically will align everything on the same radius, but in a circle. Um, and we can go ahead and hit up to, do you know what the max copies are, Tony? No, I have no idea. Okay, let's just keep clicking. Let's see what, we'll yeah, see what see happens. You can get it too. Let's see, let's just keep going up and up and up and up and up. All right, we're at 50, 50 copies. So just so we know for, we <laughs> for yeah, our sake, when somebody's like, I want a thousand copies, then we know. Yeah, it might depend on the size of the yep. you're working with too. Oh, for sure, for sure. And also too, we can auto-calculate the radius or we can create a custom radius. And what that radius basically means is how far those images are from the center point between those designs itself. But if we hit auto-calculate, Leonardo Design Studio Pro, the software developing team, Tony, his whole team globally, uh, has done a really good job at minimizing waste. And that's the most important part about some of these tools is we're minimizing the amount of waste that you're going to have uh, when you are creating because we all understand here at Caesar North America and Caesar Global that these, our, our materials, although very, very great materials, they still cost money and we understand that. So why don't we help you to save some by eliminating waste, giving you more material to utilize uh, as you're going about your day and through your projects. So let's go ahead and reset everything back to a little bit of normalcy. Pat Boyle, if I am going to create a custom, let's say, let's go ahead and create a custom rounded uh, rectangle. Let me blow this up really fast. You'd probably be safe to say that there's gonna be some people that are gonna wanna be able to make their artwork run along the path of that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So let's show you how to do it really fast uh, on the fly. So I'm gonna create a custom radius, a corner radius to this rounded rectangle, hit apply, and now I have it on screen. The cool part is, is I can go ahead and select that shape, come down to my text tool, and now I can hit text to path. Here's the, this is literally my, one of my favorite tools so far because for my business as a sign maker, being able to fit text to path on multiple shapes and different thing elements in my designing is really, really pivotal and key to get things done quickly. So we can go ahead again, Caesar Global. In here, I can also change the size of my text. I can manipulate the radius of how far that path grows from the original shape. And so that's a really cool thing too, because you know, guys, when we have a, a shape on screen, sometimes you might wanna put a one inch shape you still want to be able to fit text to path on it. I can do the same by just uh, uh, minimizing or sorry, zooming out a little bit. And now I can take that one inch shape 
and create an eight inch shape and be able to fit my, my uh, text to that path. So that's a pretty cool option. Um, I, I think it's definitely an innovative option here that we've been able to add. And if you notice, everything that we do when it comes to templating, when it comes to just trying to make the creation process a little bit more simplistic and streamlined, is we give you the freedom to manipulate everything in real time. You guys saw it with our print and cut in our basic software where you can create a custom cut contour and you can utilize that, uh, that little slider bar and create that contour as big or as small as you want it to be. Now we're able to do that, not only with the uh, fit to cone, we're able to do it with the fit to paths tool and everything like that. So I can come in and change the font style as well, like we have been. Um, I kind of like this Algerian. Shout out to anybody in, this, uh, in the live right now that likes Algerian fonts for sure. Uh, but with that, now I can come back to my properties. And again, I can change that path offset manually. I can change that start position. But here's the really cool part. Check this out. I can grab that little green uh, circle. And now I can bring this around any part of the shape that I want. So if I want that hanging off on an edge, let's say that this is going to be for, uh, we'll call it a shoulder design. You know, that's the only part of the body that I'm thinking in my head. But we have a shoulder design. We can bring it around one of the corners. And again, we can see that one hit. I like that. And then again, we can still make that, make that offset as big or as small as we want it to be to actually fit around that path. Um, so for my imitation maker people, if you do anything like this where you're, you need an accurate setup to be able to uh, fit text to a path and run it around in different oddball positions, because like this one would be really cool, Caesar Global, and then we can get rid of this shape and then we can add uh, welcomes you, right? Because that's what everybody welcomes. I hope I'm spelling right. Don't yell at me if I'm not. Welcomes you. Hit this. We can go to paths. Like I said, ungroup paths. I'm just going to weld this word together and then weld the welcome together. And you guys see me doing this in real time. So you guys can see that it's not taking me a lot of effort to actually make these tools work and operate. But there we go. That's my... 101 on invitation making that works Does that work for the room thank you so much i appreciate that <laughs> all right let's get into uh some other tools and functions some fun stuff that we can talk about let's go into um all of now our intimate like artwork manipulation tools okay i want to really dive into this quickly um we can let's do this bring up a bigger rectangle i'm just going to make a copy of this rectangle so we can see some of these we showed you, and I'm going to go right down the line. We're going to learn these tools together. We showed you that we have the weld tool already. We already have the make compound path and release compound path, but there's a couple of other tools like punch out, remove. Okay. Interesting. Punch out, keep our stamp, keep, sorry, and intersect and then slice intersect. And then we have color layer weld, and then we have base layer weld. So let's dive in. We showed you what the punch out remove does. Basically takes the foreground, knocks it out of the background, quick, convenient, and on the fly. And the cool part is, is let's say, you know, you want to keep, let's say we're doing the knockout method with our design. So actually I'm gonna apply both of these designs um, to itself. Or you know what, let's just do a text really quick because I wanna show it and actually how it should be. Uh, give me a name. Give me a name in the group. Just give me somebody's name in the group that's commenting. Trevor. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll take that. That's good. Thanks, Trevor, for watching. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> uh, let's go into something funsies. Where's that balloon one? Boop, 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 boop. There it is. Balloons. I love this font. No, I don't want to do that one. Sorry, Trevor. No, I, I actually like this one way better. Do you good? So, yeah, Thank I'm you glad so you, I'm glad I'm you so chose glad. this one. So here's what we're going to do to show this one. I'm going to go to my build cut contours. This is something that's already included in Leonardo Design Studio Basic. Create an editable contour and include holes because I want to uh, punch out or knock out essentially a layer of this design, uh, but I want to keep it with the holes itself. So. Let's go ahead and bring our offset amount down. And if you guys uh, do want to see the offset in real time, here's a quick tip and trick. I usually just hit print and cut because it'll show me that little line. Tony, maybe with something we add is just like a, a secondary color line. Yep. And then I can change and manipulate my inset amount. And once I'm comfortable with my inset, then I just go back to editable contours because it 
keeps all of the uh, the files and everything the same. I'm gonna hit bring that layer to the front and we're gonna change it to red. So once we hit apply, you now see that I have my red layer that we just built as my inset and I have my original text. Uh, so once these are together, I can highlight both and we'll show you what these tools do. So again, we showed you the punch out. I think that that's an easy one. I think a lot of people wanted that, and that's, that's a simple one to accomplish. But let's say I'm using two layers of Easy Weed, and I'm gonna have everything solid. So there's not a lot of cavities in this design, and I wanna make it feel a little bit lighter on the shirt. I don't wanna just apply material to material. I actually have the option now to, instead of hitting Punch Out, go to Stamp and Keep, which now will keep the remaining foreground layer and it will knock out the back layer. So this is a really quick way to knock out two images. And now I'm ready to, to create this t-shirt for Trev. And uh, he, can, he doesn't have to worry about a lot of weight in the, uh, in the vinyl in those two layers, which I think is pretty cool. So let's go into the next one. <laughs> it's, not heavy, it's not heavy, so I don't fall over due yeah, to the sheer we don't, weight of the vinyl. You guys saw a live or a couple <laughs> lives ago, Trev was falling all over the ground here. So we, yeah. gotta, we gotta keep it light on the shoulders, so. All right, and then we have the intersect, which this one is pretty cool. I like the way that this tool works. Let's say uh, that I have, let me actually see if I can offset it just a little bit, because it'll make more sense, I think, to everybody. So the intersect is basically taking the foreground and punching it out of the, the background, but in uh, the position that it lies, that both uh, layers lie into. Now, when we utilize that, we can go into our slice intersect, which will actually punch the uh, back, or foreground out of the background, but it will keep the remaining background and foreground images. So it's basically just, it's essentially like the common shape, but a quick way to do a common shape. And next tool is on the docket. Let's see, slice intersect is the one that we just did. We have the make compound and release compound path in the basic, uh, but let's actually take one more layer of this red and let's move it up and off out of the way. And then we're actually gonna go in and create that as our background. So now the folks can see our layers in order, our red layer, and let me actually bring this up so we can see. We have a red layer, which is our back layer. And I'm gonna show you a little pro tip if you didn't know about this. You can hover over shape, double click it, and now I can create back layer and actually name this. Now one of the cool parts, oops, sorry, I didn't hit enter. Back layer, enter, there we go. So now I have my back layer. I can do my center layer. And then I can do my front layer. So now two parts of this that make this a really cool option and tool. If I save this as a Leonardo Design Studio file and say I wanna share it with my buddy because I want them to be able to create this, they actually will see in software. So say I'm using custom colors uh, and then we're not just putting back layer, center layer, front layer, but maybe we're doing crimson and graphite and another color, we'll do fluorescent pink. I can name all of these layers as I see them and as they work on the artwork when I go over to send them over to my friend Anna and she wants to make the Trevor shirt because she thinks it's so cool, it'll actually pull up in Leonardo Design Studio with those color layers. So now, not only are we showing uh, that you can actually create the custom color names in software, you also have the ability to kind of share those with friends and they'll have that information too, which I think is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and highlight everything, show you this next tool. Color, uh, this is just color layer weld. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is click on that. And now, let me remove that. You can see that not only did we do a knockout of all three layers at the same time, but now we are also able to weld that red shape all together, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, and it just makes, again, we're talking about making it more convenient, giving you the freedom to create the new designs and create again. So you saw my three layers pop back up. Let's go over to the next tool and let's go base layer weld. So this is a cool uh, option. It'll bring in on-screen prompt and I can choose what layer uh, that I want to be my base layer and it will actually uh, take the full design that I have and create one layer out of it. So for my folks out there that maybe do things with sublimation and you want multiple things in your artwork, I can go ahead and highlight this, hit that base layer weld, 
say I want my uh, red to be that, that easy subly, we're doing the two-step method. I want that to be my easy subly, I can hit the red, hit okay, and now as you can see, that red has a full diagram for me. So now I can fit in, right here as you can see, the other part of the Trevor name, I can fit this into maybe like a high res photo, and then once it's set into place, it'll give me something really cool. Oop, now I gotta remember where it fits. And it's somewhere in there, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so let's go over the next couple of tools. What else do we have in here? Hey, Pat. Yeah, go ahead. So the good people are loving seeing you try out all these tools, but they're very eager to try them out themselves. Ooh, okay. So. So let's talk about that actually. And there's a couple of other pieces of information I just wanna give you really quick and then we're actually gonna get into that. So one of the last things that we have, uh, and I think this is such, I mean genius for the, the just craft hobbyist and also genius for the entrepreneur that wants to maybe start a business and scale up is job notes and statistics. So I can click on that job notes. I now have a notepad with some dialogue in it. Uh, so I can put Trevor shirt, uh, you know, fifteen ninety nine. I know that's a lot. Sorry, Trevor. I'm gonna charge you for your own name. But I have now my notes for this design. I also have my page size. All the items that are actually on the page. It'll give me the total space area and, or shape area. And PB. I mean, you can talk about that. Is having like an actual square inches and knowing what that is is so imperative. It's so huge. It's the it's the true cost of creating custom apparel and yeah. you know people ask us all the time well, how much is a 10 yard roll how much is a 50 yard roll how mm -hmm. much is a five yard roll and really what they want is this information is how much is it going to cost yeah to make that design that you have on your shirt right now yeah exactly and, and now we have the ability right in software it makes it super super simple i can hit update and it, as you see it pops up a little uh notepad here in the bottom so if i do need to go back in the process and update any notes i can just click on it and i can erase notes i can add new ones i can make sure that all the colors maybe i have specific hex codes you know pb does a lot for like local baseball teams football teams and stuff like that maybe there's a specific pantone color you need to hit i can put input all that information in the job notes make sure that it's always there for me. So anytime I go back to this design, say I'm saving it for a local sports team and they have the, there's always the one, the one straggler kid and that was me in, in school where it was like I come halfway through the season and now the team has to order a whole new jersey and my stuff looks different than everybody's. I can make sure it's pinpoint exact and now everybody's included. I think that's pretty awesome. So. These are just some of the minor, or the, the tools, basic tools of the pro. There's so much more in there, um, and we want you to be able to, uh, we want you to be able to go ahead and start playing with this. So I think what we do right now is I'm gonna set this to the side. We're gonna get out of Leonardo Design Studio Pro, and let's talk about uh, Leonardo Design Studio and what we can expect here in the future. Did I miss anything? Yeah, Anna, go ahead. One more thing. What if I make something really, really cool in Leonardo and I want to send it to somebody else? I thought you guys would never ask this question. We're going to go back to Leonardo Pro. <laughs> no, no, no. This was good. I was hoping somebody would ask and that's why I put it away. All right. So let's say we have a really cool design. Um, let's, just, let's just import something really fast. I think I have some LDS files in here. No, I don't. Oh, I get a... Hold the phone, people. Let's go into my recents. Let's check out what I got going on in here. Um, I got some random stuff. Here we go. The S logo. I'm really, just so you guys know, I'm really making a big push for this logo at Printing United. So I got to put it out in the ether to the group, too. So let's say I have this design um, on screen that I like. See, PB already gave me the thumbs up. And I wanna be able to save this design. You're probably asking yourself, well, what can I do? Let's just explore it. Let's go into File. And now, in Leonardo Design Studio Pro, you're gonna see your fancy button that says Export Artwork. So let's check the file types that we can actually export our Leonardo Design Studio. So, Selected Artwork Only, much like your Send Design menu, you have Selected Artwork Only, or all the artwork that fits on the page, and we can also include cut contours if we're utilizing a print and cut image uh, for our design. And I think this is a, the, probably the biggest reveal of this software right now, is exporting file types, and currently to date, not only, as I teased on Tuesday, and I apologize to the audience that got frustrated with me, 
When I say maybe, but I can't talk about it, it means that it's there. So we can now export in SVG file types, we can export in a PDF file, we can export in a PNG, a JPEG, and a TIFF file. And so now we are starting to bridge the gap in being able to import and export different file types, which is a massive, massive uh, accomplishment for our software team and for our teams all around. So we'll give a quick round of applause to the software team and Tony uh, for helping out with this and making sure that, that, that we have something really cool. So now I can save as this as a PDF. I could go ahead and save it to my local uh, desktop and I can shoot it over to Tony or Pat or Trevor or Adam or Anna or Johan or Maya or whoever else is hanging out there because there's a lot of them out there. Uh, we now have the ability to share our content and share what we're creating every single day. So now that we've shown you all the cool stuff in Leonardo Design Studio, let's get into the nitty gritty and what you guys really want to know. Okay, I got some notes here because I want to make sure that everything's pinpoint accurate for you guys so there's no mistakes. Leonardo Design Studio, we are happy to announce that it is a subscription model to you as the end user. And what that means for you is it doesn't mean that we eliminate Leonardo Design Studio Basic. That's not our intention. What we will always continue to do by this subscription is not only update Leonardo Design Studio Pro constantly to make sure that you always have the best software that's out there with the most accurate, the most precise, and the best cutting systems that I feel as a crafter, as a creator, I'll take off my Caesar hat virtually as a creator, I find to be some of the most accurate and best tools that I've had the opportunity to use. We will always be updating basic and to that we are adding a bunch of new tools and options into our next update that not only will be for pro, but will be for the basic users as well. Subscription price monthly is $8.99 USD. So I know there was a lot of speculation the last week about how much is it gonna cost? Is it subscription? Is it one time buy? Is it this, is it that? Let me clear the air for everybody. The reason we went to a subscription model is this is like buying shares into Leonardo Design Studio. As you've been able to see since September, when we launched Leonardo Design Studio Basic, you guys are the ones that have taught us and shown us exactly what you want in software, exactly what tools and functions that you need and require, and exactly how we can manipulate and grow this platform to just creating a little bit more of a beautiful world with your help. So being that Leonardo Design Studio Pro is $8.99, being that it's a monthly subscription, Tony and I have gone back and forth and all of us here at Caesar about the next steps and how we deliver this to you. And everybody here at Caesar North America, Caesar Italy, Caesar Asia, ANZ, uh, Latin America, we're very happy globally to announce that as of today, July 14th, Leonardo Design Studio Pro is free to you, for all of you to use all the way until August 31st. So you now have the rest of the summer to play along with Leonardo Design Studio Pro. You can get inside, and also I wanna just make clear, hey Tony, when they're signing up for Leonardo Pro and they click that button in software, are we asking for credit card information? It's a clickable button. Are we asking for any of that's pertinent stuff? So again, that's right from the virtual horse's mouth or the software horse's mouth, should I say. <laughs> and, then Pat, <laughs> Pat, and then Pat Boyle to validate. We are not charging you for this. We want you to go in Leonardo Design Studio Pro will have a black box at the top, a little, little bar at the top, that will allow you to go in and start your trial. That trial, again, ends on August 31st. I'm sure we'll have a prompt a few days before that uh, so that you can then access uh, your Leonardo Design Studio Pro and actually buy into the software for that $8.99 a month uh, subscription. And again, down the road, just so you guys are aware, we're working on yearly pricing models and all of that stuff, but as a global company, or sorry, as a global company, a lot of exchange rates and a lot of logistics that we have to go through. So by the time we get to August 31st, we'll have more information if you would like to do a yearly membership or yearly subscription, so you don't have to do the month to month, we understand it, uh, but we're happy to deliver a software and a cutting system uh, that is going to, again, allow you to continue to grow and continue to play. So let me just make sure that I got everything else on my list. Does anybody in this room have any last minute comments, thoughts, anything that we need to bring to the table that I'm missing? What happens after 
August 1st. Ooh, if good you're question. A new user. Good question. So, with Leonardo Design Studio Pro, Tony, did we open it up for seven days, correct, for the trial? Seven days after So, that. perfect. So, once you sign up for your uh, Leonardo Design Studio Pro, you'll have seven days. So, Tony, if I say I decide to sign up on August uh, 30, August 29th, what happens? Uh, September 5th. There we go. See, I'm challenging everybody this week with dates. You guys all put the calendar on me and put it back on you. So, as he said, we are going to extend that for that seven day trial. So you have it. So not only do you have Leonardo Design Studio Pro from July 14th to August 31st, or this way, depending on what orientation the camera is, uh, you also can extend it another seven days if you wait towards the end and then you decide to buy in. So was there any other big ones? What about the folks that may have not purchased a cutter yet? Can they still try Pro? Oh, come on, of course. We're an open platform, guys. We give you the freedom to do this stuff. The only thing that you're not able to do in Leonardo Design Studio Pro if you do not have a registered cutter, and Tony can correct me if I'm wrong, is just exporting exporting files. That's And, and we're working on that. That's just beautiful. a technical thing. We'll have an update in a few weeks. Guys, but... you guys just heard right now because there was one person in there like, I want to be able to export. You answered it. See, and that's how quick we work. Every time you guys have come to us with a new tool, a new option, something that you really, really want to see in Leonardo Design Studio, this team, this software team, this marketing team, everybody here globally at Caesar has been able to execute that in a few short days, whether it's uh, 24 hours for an update or it's three days for a big update that you want. And remember, for you guys that are playing around with the software, as you've given us the feedback before, continue to give us feedback on Leonardo Design Studio because without you guys and without the team, the influencer teams, without the business teams, uh, that is the way that you're actually able to guide this software and help us to grow. And easy way to do that is send an email. We're gonna just we're gonna try to bottleneck some of these because we want to make sure they all come to one source. Tony, myself, Anna, the marketing teams globally, we all want to be able to see it. So social at CaesarNA.com. Uh, and sorry, Trev, you may have to make a quick one really fast, but social at CaesarNA.com is where you can send all of your feedback to. It comes directly to myself, it comes directly to Anna. Tony is have it has access to it. Everybody here has access. Uh, that's part of the development of this cutter, part of the development of the software, and most importantly, part of the future and longevity of what we have. So we're very excited uh, for everything. Obviously, as we always say, follow us along on all platforms here at Caesar North America, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, I think that it's a good time to call out Pat Boyle is that we're gonna have, you're gonna get double the Pat. We're gonna both try to educate you in different ways. One of us will take basic, maybe one of us will take pro, and we're gonna make some content, and we're gonna we're gonna just teach, continue to teach the audience, and uh, so more content coming very soon. I know our team, part of our team, and why Trevor's man in the cameras, because the other two videographers are upstairs creating more content for you guys. So that's an exciting thing uh, that we have going here. But like we say all the time. Thank you guys for the continued efforts. Thank you for the comments, whether good, bad, or indifferent. What's up, Pat? A uh, comment just came in from Kayla asking if uh, they can send suggestions for new features to social at the Kayla who? .com. Is that MBK? Solis? Okay, listen, social at CaesarNA.com. You send it all to me. And you address it, Patrick, in the in the address line. I have no problem with it because our mission is to create something for you. I don't come out here, guys. The monthly subscription, as you can see, I, although our new TV is beautiful, I'm not investing that to build new, a big new fancy studio and a fake house that we can deliver all these. Oh, we got this new press and we got this and we got all that. We don't need that. You guys create. You guys are buying into the subscription to continue the growth of our software. We're very excited. So as I said before, thank you guys for the comments, the questions, the concerns, the good, the bad, the indifferent. We love hearing it. I wanna see what you guys can create. If everybody else in the room agrees, Tony, I think, it's time to hit the button. Let's do it. All right, so Tony is hitting the button right now. You guys have a great rest of your day. I like that virtual one. You guys have a great rest of your day. Get into Leonardo Design Studio Pro right now. Start playing around with this. Give us some good feedback. Share out your projects in the support group. Share your projects in all the groups that you're a part of because we want to grow this platform. And the only way that we do that is when we have you guys uh, and your help and your continued guidance for this software and for this ecosystem that we're building. With that said, guys, stay creative. Good luck. And we'll see you next time.